We've, for a number of weeks now, been on a uh, series that we began calling it The God of Increase. And then we learned that that wasn't the title. <laughs> you know, light is progressive, right? You, you learn as you go. And that it was actually foundational principles of increase. And that the Lord had given us three, three foundational principles of increase. Now, if you haven't been with us, let me, we've covered a bunch of ground prior to today. So let me encourage you, go online and go to the Word Supply and you can watch or listen to everything that came before it. No charge, won't cost you anything but some time. How many think it's a good investment of your time? It is, it is. And the first one was honor. We, we didn't realize that's what it was, but uh, uh, I was going to go over the, the woman's alabaster box <laughs> one time, wound up going over it a dozen times, and you can see why now. Because um, Judas and then the, the other disciples got caught up in his confusion. They dishonored this woman's gift. They spoke evil of it and they judged her. And what they didn't realize is uh, how serious of a thing this was that uh, Judas was valuing the money way more than Jesus. Amen. Hmm? And he, he tried to hide it by acting like he cared about the poor. See, this is still going on today. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Every, right and left. Right. And it's, it's tricky. It's subtle. The devil is tricky. Mm -hmm. And so they were saying, oh, what a waste. Didn't stop to think, wasted on who? Oh. <laughs> right? That's right? On the master? That's right. Wasted. And of course, he is the word. Yes. That's right. Manifest in the flesh. Amen. Wasted on the word. Amen. Wasted on the ministry. Wasted on Jesus. They didn't see how, how messed up this thinking was because all they heard was could have been given to the poor. Right. Well, with God, it's not either or. Right. That's right. He can do both. Yeah. That's, right. That's what he said. He said, you got the poor with you all the time. You can help them anytime you want to. Right. But this woman has done a good work. Amen. Hmm. Are there good works other than Helping people materially? Oh, yes. 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 And really, the greatest need of, of human beings is not material. Amen. Even if you're starving to death. What do you mean? If you gain the whole world and lose your soul, Amen. you have profited nothing. Now, it is good to help people. Right. But we cannot become anybody's provider, Amen. our source. Right. We're not big enough. And God never intended that one man or woman be dependent on another. Right. All of us can go straight to God. That's right. He's our source. Yes, he unlimited. Yes. Unfailing. Yes. Can you say amen? amen? So no, this is just really messed up wrong thinking all through here. But it's religious. And it's ingrained. It's been ingrained for hundreds of years. But praise God, the truth will make you free. And so we saw they tried to dishonor her seed. And they didn't understand what was going on because to her, it was an honor offering. And Jesus saw it that way. And he received it and corrected them and reproved them. You know, uh, somebody was uh, talking to one of our staff uh, recently and, and something came up about this could have been sold and given to the poor. And they said, well, yeah, that was, you know, Jesus said that. And, and I, my staff said, no, no, Jesus didn't say that. Could have been sold and given to the poor. They said, well, yeah, it's, it's in the Bible. Yeah, it's in the Bible. But Judas Iscariot said it. And that's how confused the modern church world is. They're actually more in agreement with Judas than they are with Jesus. Say, not us by the grace of God. Not, no, not us. So then secondly, we spent quite a bit of time on that, but secondly, we got into, anybody remember the second one? The worship. worship. And, and uh, I didn't see this 
as clearly as I do now. When the Lord said worship to me, I thought, okay, I'm not quite seeing it. But then brought me back to this, that idolatry, covetousness rather, is idolatry. Both Colossians and Ephesians say that, that covetousness is idolatry. And people have, because of the enemy's influence, they've changed scriptures and twisted it and said, you know, money is the root of all evil. That's not what the scripture said. That's not true. The love, people say, well, same thing. Oh, no, 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 no. You can love money and not have a dime. Amen. You can just lay, about, lay around and dream about what you could do if you had money and not have any money. Well, if you can love money and not have it, you could have it and not love it, right? It's not the same thing. And in this world, you need some resources. You need some things. And uh, I mentioned that uh, our father in the faith, Kenneth Hagin Sr., who's in heaven now, he had multiple visitations by the head of the church. Now you see that that happens in the scriptures and it still happens today, not, not for everybody, not everywhere, not all the time. And you have to judge it. When you hear something like that, you have to judge it first by the written word of God. Then you judge it by your own heart, what you have a witness to. But we were around him for a long time and, and saw nothing but confirmation of what he talked about. And, and so uh, he said in one of these visitations, he said he saw the master and that he was telling him about how to follow his spirit, how to be led by his spirit. And that book, that, uh, How to Be Led by the Spirit, has got the dove on the front. That's what that came out of, was that visitation. And in the middle of that, he said, the Lord, the head of the church, looked at him. He said he saw him just as clearly as uh, you and I see each other and said, uh, if you'll learn to be led by my spirit, I'll make you rich. Now see, a lot of people, they wouldn't believe that. They wouldn't believe Jesus would say that. He said, he said that to him. He said when he said it to him, he, he, that the Lord perceived his thoughts because he thought, huh, because that sounded strange to him. The, the group he came out of, that, that he, he said, the Lord said, he said, he smiled and said, I'm not opposed to my children being rich. Hallelujah. Well, if you're familiar with the word, you know that. Who made Abraham rich, right? <laughs> uh, he said, I'm not opposed to my children being rich. I'm opposed to their being covetous. And so what has happened is the enemy has cleverly, de deceitfully got people to focus on the money and stuff instead of the love of it, instead of the covetousness. The money, uh, you can do good or bad with it, Right? The stuff, you need some things. But the problem is not the stuff. The problem is desiring it, wanting it, longing after it, it being more important to you than God. And his thing, that's the evil. That's not the stuff itself, but making it an idol. Covetousness is idolatry. And you'll find, because the Lord's giving us principles foundational principles of increase that you and I, it's our part. Adjustments that have to be made in and with us for him to increase us the way he wants to. As long as you want something too much, you want it more than you do him, he cannot add it to you. Can you see this? It would just take you away from him. But when you get to the place where you can take it or leave it, you don't have to have it, if, if he says give it away, you'll give it away, you'll let it go, then he can add it to you. It's, it's not a God to you. It's a thing. It's a tool. And uh, people, most everybody in church will nod and agree with this, but covetousness is a big problem. A big problem. Everywhere you turn, people love money. They love things and they love stuff and they think too much about it. And all of us have made some mistakes in these areas and thought too much about something. But uh, if you get it dealt with, then you qualify for more. Amen. Say it out loud. Lord, Lord reveal, to me reveal to me anything, anything 
that's too important to me. Stuff, money, things that I've thought too much about, wanted too much, work in me to will and to do your good pleasure. I love you and your people. I don't love money. I don't love things. Thank you for delivering me from covetousness. Hallelujah. So these are two of the three we have covered somewhat. And so that was a little review. Here's number three. Anybody remember what number three was? Have I announced it? I think I did. Number three, go to Isaiah. <laughs> Isaiah <laughs> chapter one. Yeah, now you got it. Uh, Isaiah chapter one, foundational principles of increase. Now when I say increase, I'm talking about God increasing you. There's different ways to get things in this life. Evil ways. You can lie. You can steal. You can, you know, rob somebody. But that's not God adding it to you. But for the Lord to add something to you, He's pointing out to us the things that are, are our parts. In Isaiah, the first chapter, and verse 19, I believe it is. He said, if. Now, let's stop at this word right here. <laughs> what does if mean? It's conditional, right? If you do this, you'll get this outcome. If you don't do it, will you get the same outcome? No, no you won't. No, you won't. If you be willing and obedient. Now, two things he mentions. And they go together. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Is that increase? Yes. You got to have some increase to have something to eat. Got to have some increase. But he's, uh, this word good, if you look it up in the other translations, it has the connotation of best. And let me read some of them to you. Um, this, this translation said, if you're willing and listen to me, you will eat the good things of the land. Berean translation says, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best of the land. The CEV, the contemporary says, if you willingly obey me, the best crops in the land will be yours. Does that sound good? The International Standard Version says, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the best that the land produces. Hmm? And you know, a lot of folks in our circles, they know that verse. They've heard it. They remember it. That's not the end of the topic. Right? Read the next verse. <laughs> What's the next verse say? Huh? But... <laughs> If, so now is he still talking about different outcomes? If you're willing and obedient, you'll get this outcome. But if you refuse and rebel, will you get the same thing as verse 19? No, you won't. You will get the opposite of verse 19. If you refuse and rebel, you'll be devoured with the sword. Now, that word devour is also used in the New Testament in connection with the devil, with the enemy, that like a roaring lion, right, he goes about seeking whom he may devour. Now, I really like that last phrase because may implies there's some he may not. Amen. <laughs> And you are looking at a may not. Amen. You too? Yes. Huh? Yes. 
But now that won't come just because you, you said it this morning. Huh? Because these people can be devoured. Who? Rebellious. Stubborn. Disobedient. Is, is this an issue in today's world? Oh, Lord. Help us. Huh? Huh? Is there defiance? Is there attitude? You can't make me. You don't tell me what to do. Huh? Woo. And the problem is, folks are not just that way with people. They're that way with God. They wouldn't like to admit it. But you'll see that the way you are with people, that's just the way you are. That's the way you are with God too. And I can sum up the biggest problem on the whole planet in two words. <laughs> what do you think? Huh? Won't? Listen. <laughs> You're laughing. I'm serious. This is the biggest problem on the planet. With all the what? Seven, eight billion people? How many it is? Won't listen. What do you mean? Won't listen to God. Will not. Won't listen to Him. Won't do what He says. Won't believe what He says to believe. Sadly, that's how it's going to be. There's a broad way that leads to destruction. And you know who's on it? Rebels. Defiant. Why? That's the devil's bunch. He is the leader of the rebellion. Yeah. And what did he do? Adam and Eve are walking with God, communing with him, perfect, pure, no curse, no death, no disease, no lack. What does the enemy come and do? Comes and convinces them to defy God, to disobey Him. The one thing He told them not to do, convincing them to do it. Why? It was about a lot more than just the fruit of the tree. The enemy, he thinks all this is his. He's called, 2 Corinthians 5, the God, little g, of this world. And he is. And that's why it's the way it is. But his time is running out. I said his time is running out. And the king of kings, Lord of lords, is going to come and straighten this thing out. And all the people that decided to rebel against God are going to get to stay with the evil one, the head of the rebellion. That's the side they chose. And that's sad. But it wasn't my choice. And it wasn't your choice. And it's not even God's choice. I heard on a talk show, international talk show one time, uh, this person, you could tell he wasn't an unbeliever, the, the interviewer was kind of pressuring this famous uh, pastor that he had across the table saying, you know, how can a God who is love send people to a place of torment for eternity? He said, how can love do that? They were talking about it, and while they were doing it, I said, Lord, what's the best way to answer that? I mean, I know you're a good God, but what, what's the best way to answer that? You know, before you get the answers, let me tell you, uh, uh, the, your, your fallback position, I shouldn't say fallback, your standing position, always stay on God's side, Amen. right? Regardless of what you understand, or don't understand. If people say, well, how can God do that? You go, I don't know, but I'm with him. <laughs> and he's right. That's right. <laughs> about everything. That's right. All the time. And I'm with him. That's right. Yeah, but how? Well, I don't know, but. 
I'm with him. And the Lord spoke to my heart when, when they were saying, how can a God who is love send people to a place of eternal torment? And, and the Father spoke to me just as, I don't mean I heard an audible voice, but inside very distinctly, he said, Keith, it's not my choice. Is that true? Yes. Is that true? Yes. It's not my choice. So it was their choice, right? It was their choice. Could they have believed? Could they have bowed the knee to Jesus? Could they? But they didn't. They defied him and they joined the rebellion. And the Lord's only going to let that go so long. And then that whole bunch is going to be swept into the lake of fire and separated from mankind, separated from the redeemed, I should say, for eternity to come. I mean, I don't want to be living next to a bunch of rebels, right? Trying to stir up something against God again. No, that's got to be stopped permanently. And so right now what's happening through every human being's little short lifespan is they get an opportunity to choose which side they want to be on. Thank God for the grace of God that you and I have been able to get on the right side. Right? Bow our knee in submission and deference and reverence to the only Savior, Redeemer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the only Creator, Father God. That's it. There's only one. Only one. And so he's saying, if you're willing. Now that, that's where it starts. A lot of times you won't even find what you should obey in unless you're willing to hear it. Because the Lord sees your heart. And he knows there's sometimes there's no need in even talking to you because you're not willing. Right? And so you say, well, I don't know what to do. Well, you need a heart change. You got to be willing to do anything, anything he tells you to do. Right? And then you find out what? <laughs> Go to John, please. So hold your place here. Go to John 7. Man, this is growing on me as I'm speaking. We've only got to the text <laughs> so far. I hope y'all can come back. I mean, huh? John 7. Is this important though? Yes, sir. Does this sound right to your heart that these are, that there's a lot more to God's increase than giving? Huh? Then giving. Giving's part of it, but it's not all of it. See, you can give and be rebellious. Right? You can put money in the plate and be disrespectful. Right? No, the, God's always looking at the heart. These are the big things. Honor, worship, and now obedience. In uh, John 7, in verse 17, John 7, 17, he said, Jesus said, if any man will do his will, what's the result? He shall know, and they were talking specifically about doctrine, but this is actually bigger than that. He'll know whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. This is a big key to being able to discern what's God and what's just men. What is it? If any man what? Well, actually, other translations say it like this, is willing. Or uh, there, there can be an S on that word. If any man wills to do his will. If you look up the word, you'll see what I mean. If any man wills to do his will. See, you had not even done it yet. I'm talking about finding out what the will of God is. But if you will to do it because you trust him, let me back up just a little bit. Isaiah 1 said, 
if you'll be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Now you say that in some circles today, and some people will say, oh, Brother Keith, that's works. That's works. If you have to do anything, that's works. And we live in the age of grace where Jesus has already done everything, so no, no, you, you're back in the Old Testament, and you need to get a revelation, Brother Keith. <laughs> and you're laughing, I've heard stuff like this. No, what they don't understand is that faith is not works. But faith includes obedience. In fact, the New Testament talks about the obedience of faith. This is not obeying, trying to qualify for a blessing. No, Jesus has qualified us by what he has done. This is not trying to do things to earn prosperity or provision. No, this is not works, but you know what it is? It is getting on his path, like we've been praying over these guys today, that, is, that he has provided for. Amen. And obeying so that you keep the appointments of provision and grace that he's laid out for you. Amen. And you do it even when you don't understand why, because you trust him. Faith will obey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Trust will obey. Not knowing. Not understanding. Now, I know it took just a few minutes to say that, but this is a big issue in the body of Christ right now. There are a lot of people who think anything you need to do is somehow works. But how many remember what James talks about in the New Testament? That faith without a work or an action is dead. It's dead. And no, you're not trying to qualify for something. You're not trying to earn something. But you do need to do what the Lord told you to do. Amen. Right? Amen. So that he can accomplish what he wants in your life because he's not going to force you. That's right. That's right. He will not force you. That's right. So it's still true. If you are willing and obedient, then God's going to lead you to a good place. You're going to wind up at the right place at the right time. You're going to have plenty. You're going to eat the best. Ride in the best. Oh, I lost somebody. Ride in the best. Live in the best. Have church in the best. Fly in the best. Did God give the, the understanding and, and for the best for the devil and his crowd? No. Only? No, no. If you're willing and obedient, you'll eat and enjoy the best the land has to offer. Amen. You know, we, we prayed over that plane when it came in the other day and blessed it. And there was a time that uh, I kind of scratched my head and thought, you know, can a thing like that be blessed? I don't want to just do something because right, right, right. somebody else said you know, and, and I didn't get the answer right away, but uh, later on the Lord pointed out to me, he said, you know, uh, like a car or a machine or a house or whatever, all the components of that came out of the ground. Amen. Didn't they? Yes. The metals, the trees that grew out of the ground, yes. well, that came out of the ground. Can the ground be cursed or blessed? Yes. No question about that. So, yeah. It can be. But, uh, you know, if, if you're not serving God, don't believe in him, then don't count on your stuff being blessed. Right. <laughs> no matter who prayed over it. Right. <laughs> you can't separate one from the other. But if it's used, especially if it's used for his purposes and his things, he has a right to keep it. Amen. Amen. If any man, verse 17, will do his will, or wills to do his will, is willing to do his will. What's the next phrase? He will know something. Know what? You'll know whether it's God or just human origin. I speak of myself. Is this one of the biggest things to learn in, the, in your whole life? Yes. Is what's God yes. and what's not? Yes. What to go? Where does it start? 
Not with begging. I said not begging. It's a willingness in your heart. I know some years ago the Lord gave me this, this phrase. You'll pick up the plan on the willing band. And talking about your radio signals like AM band, FM band. Can you, <coughs> can you receive uh, FM station on the AM band? No. no. You can't. Can you? No. Are you sure? Yes. You know, you, you're trying to pick up this FM station. Mm -hmm. And you know they're saying something, singing something you want to hear. But you can't get it. Because you're on the AM band. Well, what if you get you some more amp amplifiers? No. Huh? I mean, get you some big ones. No. And hook them up and get you some bigger speakers. No. Huh? No. Get you, you need a bigger antenna. No. Put a big antenna no. on the back. No. What, what, what am I talking about? I, I'm going to repeat this as we go. Nothing can replace obedience. Amen. Nothing. Is, will God accept, it to, accept as a substitute for obedience? We'll see that later. Anybody remember the phrase, um, to obey is better than sacrifice? Well, well, that's, what, that's what we're saying. If God says, get up and go to church. You say, well, I'll just send a big offering. <laughs> They'll be happy with that. Uh -uh. You cannot send a big enough offering to replace obedience. Amen. Hmm? Get on a team. Can you, can you replace that with something else? Just as good. Say, God, you know, I know you said that, but how about... How about, right? Let, let's do this. I'll do this. He accepts no substitutes for obedience. He's not going to concede that your plan and solution is as good as his. Is he? No. Certainly not better. No. So what? Confusion will set in if you know what God wants you to do, but you won't do it. That's where the light co it closes off. Because see, the willingness to do it causes you to know. What is this knowing? This knowing is revelation. This knowing is enlightenment. And that's the willingness in your heart that causes that. There's a connection between willing or unwilling and closed or open. And, you know, you can take that car that the receiver's on the AM band and you can pray to get something on the FM band and you can fast and you can put amplifiers and whip antennas and you can even take your car and put the bumper up against the station <laughs> that you want to pick up and you will receive nothing. I mean, you may, it may sound like bacon frying because you got so much power on your speakers all over the block, but you will receive nothing, nothing. from the FM station because you're on the wrong band. But man, you just switch the band. Woo! You'll find out it was broadcasting all the time. All the time. People say, God won't talk to me. Oh, he's talking. Yes. You're just not on the right band. Right. I just can't hear. Well, that's not his fault. The station is broadcasting. Right. Hmm? Yes. How many understand the problem's always on the receiving end? Yes. Always. 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 If there's a problem, if there's no reception, it's not because God had a brownout in heaven. <laughs> Huh? Or is he experiencing technical difficulties <laughs> at the throne? Ain't never happened. Amen. Never gonna happen. It's always a reception issue. 
Always. 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 And you'll find. I mean, I, I saw this one time. Uh, uh, Phyllis and I had been in the ministry for, I don't know, 10 years or so. And uh, I was really busy speaking. I'd speak 10, 15, 20 times a week. And uh, the Lord began to deal with me about going out on the weekends and ministering healing. And um, when that passed my mind, I immediately thought, I ain't got time for that. I mean, you know, uh, weekend was the only time I had for a break. And, and I thought, I, you know, when you don't want something to be the Lord, <laughs> see, what you laughing about? You, you know where I'm going. You don't want something to be the Lord? You, you do mental gymnastics. Like, what was that? I don't know what that was, you know. <laughs> I ate too much pizza last night. <clears throat> what, what is that? And so I, I just kind of pretended like I didn't notice it. And, and I thought, well, where'd that come from? I and, and, and the moment you say, I don't know, oh, the enemy, he'll be right there to go. Yeah, we don't know what that was. We don't know what that was. <clears throat> but all you're doing is confusing yourself, right. making it harder for you to hear from the Lord. Because if you say this wasn't the Lord, and then two days later, you need to hear something from him, and he's trying to tell you, well, this is what you said wasn't the Lord two days ago. Got to make up your mind. Is it him or not? And so this went on, and we were having uh, challenges in our finances. We were coming short, coming short, coming short. And uh, I had prayed about it and asked the Lord and just seemed to get no answer, nothing, no, no response. Is there a problem on the sending in the, no. the broadcast where, where's the issue where, where do you pick up the plan help me out the willing not the FM the, the willing band the willing heart and that's, that's an adjustment that can be made if you've been unwilling well I, I really was unwilling about that and uh, I, I remember I came in one day to our little house and Phyllis wasn't home yet, and, and I just plopped down in the chair. And when I did, this thing came back up to my mind about going out on the weekends and ministering healing. I said, Lord, that's you. I know that's you. <laughs> that's, that's the same witness that led us to school, Bible school. That's the same witness that's, uh, I know that's you. I'm I'm sorry. He said, uh, he interrupted me. He said, now I'm going to talk to you about your finances. I didn't know they were connected. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? I, I didn't know there was any connection there. But how many understand unwillingness in one part will close you off to answers in other parts? Right, right. Yes. Yes. Can you see this? Yes. Well, do you need to be led by the Spirit to get increase? Yes. yes. Oh, huge part of it. Do you know what, need to know what to do? Yes. I mean, you ask the wealthiest people in the world uh, about, you know, how do you get wealthy? Well, you got to know when to buy and when to sell, right? right? Mm -hmm. What to invest in, what to buy, and what and when to sell. If you knew that, you can turn $100 into $100 million. Well, you got somebody in you that knows everything about everything. Well, that, that's not necessarily your business to keep track of markets and that kind of thing, but you do need to know what to do when. And if you're unwilling or I'm unwilling in one area without realizing it, I couldn't get an answer to this other thing. And the moment I said that, I said, Lord, I, I'm sorry. That's you. If you want us to go, we'll go. Just shut, because I know it, 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 you'll help me. You'll grace me. And we did. Right. And one thing led to another, and we've been on the road ever since. Amen. <laughs> and it's good. Amen. And it's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he'll grace you to do anything, everything that he wants you to do. And our finances have been good. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why? Because if you're willing... And obedient. You'll go hungry? No. You'll eat the, the bad junk? And no. 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 If you're willing and obedient 
you will eat and enjoy the best the land produces. Somebody say, that's me, that's me. Stand on your feet, everybody. That's me. That's me. That's me. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Gives us the victory. Always causes us to triumph. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just uh, let me lead you in this prayer. And pray it with all sincerity and conviction. Say, Father God, you are a great God. You ought to be worshiped. You ought to be obeyed. Forgive me for any unwillingness, any area, any time. I judge that. I say it's not acceptable. And I choose to be willing and obedient to you because I trust you. You always have my best interest at heart. You always have a good plan for me. And I trust you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Said out loud, fill me, O Lord, with the knowledge of your will. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding, work in me to will and to do, to desire and to accomplish your perfect will. I choose you. I choose your will above everything in Jesus' name. 